Is the foil boat the best method of cooking a brisket on an offset smoker? I tested out the foil boat method in another video against other methods, and the only thing it scored comparatively lower on was juiciness and moisture retention, so I'm going to make a tweak to the way I hold a foil boat brisket, and we'll see if this tweak makes the foil boat brisket the best method possible for cooking brisket, so let's get smoking. The foil boat method is pretty simple. You smoke a brisket on your smoker until it reaches around 180 80 degrees internal, it's sweated out a lot of its moisture, and then you wrap it in a foil boat, uncovered, and you cook it the rest of the way until probe tenderness, usually around 203 degrees Fahrenheit. The pros of this method are that the point and the flat, the top and the bottom of the brisket, especially on an offset smoker, cook really evenly, and that is really important on an offset smoker where all of the heat is coming from the top down over top of the brisket, and the point and the top of the brisket tends to cook a lot faster than the bottom and the flat of the brisket. So when the brisket is sitting in all of its own juices and they're retained by that foil boat, the bottom of the brisket gets braised and cooked evenly with the top of the brisket where all that convective top-down heat is coming from, and it results in a really evenly cooked brisket. You also get maximum fat cap rendering because the top of the brisket is exposed to that hot convective heat, and you also get maximum bark crispiness and smoke flavor because, again, the top of the brisket is exposed to that hot convective smoky heat for a lot longer than if you wrapped it fully. Now, there's a couple of cons, especially if you work in a catering business or a restaurant, it's a little bit messier to handle and hold, especially if you want to hold it uncovered, which you probably should because you did this method to preserve the crispiness of the bark. You don't want to wrap it and back off all of that crispy bark and make it soggy. So that is one disadvantage, but as home cooks, it's not really as big a deal. The biggest disadvantage for home cooks like us is that it tends to score lower on juiciness when compared to other methods like fully wrapping the brisket because you're exposing the meat to the hot convective air of the smoker for longer so it's drying out and if you hold it for a long period of time after it's done, it's also uncovered and you're losing moisture from the brisket into the environment. So other methods that involve wrapping the brisket tend to win out over the foil boat method because they result in a little bit more of a juicy end product and that's what people really care about, let's face it. People are willing to overlook the fact that a brisket is unseasoned or the bark isn't as crunchy or smoky as long as the interior of the brisket is super juicy and tender. That's what really matters and that's why why other wrapped methods have a little bit of an advantage over the foil boat method. But what if that weren't the case? What if we could figure out a way to make the foil boat brisket method just as juicy as other methods, but still retain that super smoky crispy bark that has a super fully rendered fat cap that would be amazing. But how do we do that? Well, my theory is that the place to do that is in the holding phase. When we hold the brisket for a long period of time after it's cooked, we have an opportunity to add moisture back into it. And the way that I think is best for doing that is holding it in a high humidity environment that's not super humid so that it backs off the bark and makes it soggy, but it's also not super dry so that it dries out the brisket, which in the case of a foil boat brisket is uncovered so it has the potential to lose a lot of moisture. Moisture. And the way that I'm going to achieve that in this video is with my Winston CVAP holding oven, but more on that later. Now, onto the experiment. For the control brisket, I just smoked a brisket up to around 180 degrees internal. I wrapped it in butcher paper with tallow and clarified butter, and then I continued to cook it on the smoker up to probe tenderness, which was around 203 degrees internal. I then held it for 10 hours to see how the wrapped brisket compares to the foil boat brisket. For the experimental foil boat brisket, I smoked it around eight hours on my offset smoker at 250 degrees for the first four hours, and then I ramped up temperature to around 275 to 300 for the last part of the cook. My Chef's Temp Final Touch X10 is now telling me the brisket is around 175 to 180 internal, and I've noticed that the brisket has sweated out a lot of its internal moisture and shrunk up a bit, so this is the perfect time to foil boat it. I'm now removing the brisket from the smoker, I'm wrapping it in a foil boat, and then it goes back on the smoker at 275 to 300 degrees Fahrenheit. A few hours later, the brisket is probing super tender at around 200 to 203 degrees Fahrenheit throughout the entire brisket. It's very evenly cooked, so I'm removing it from the smoker and placing it in my CVAP holding oven. Now, the Winston CVAP holding oven was pretty much invented to hold KFC chicken and keep it super moist while still retaining the crispiness of the skin. So if it can't hold a brisket and make it moist as well as crispy for a long period of time, I think you'll be hard pressed to find another holding device that can do that.
that. It uses two modes of heating, which makes it very unique. The first is water vapor temperature from the heated water pan at the bottom of the device, also known as the doneness setting. And the second is dry convective air from the heating elements on the side of the device, also known as texture or browning. When you adjust these two variables, you can control the relative humidity. So I set it to 100 degrees of water vapor temperature and 50 degrees of hot air temperature for a total of 150 degrees to hold it. This will give me a relative humidity that's much higher than something like an oven, which will retain a lot of the juiciness and moisture in the brisket, but it's also not gonna be 100% relative humidity like the environment you would get in a fully wrapped brisket, which tends to dissolve and soften the bark. After that, I held the brisket for 10 hours at that temperature, and I got ready to do the taste test, starting with the control brisket. Guys, before we get to the taste test, I wanna thank Chef's Temp for sponsoring this video. I've been using the Chef's Temp Final Touch X10 for over a year now, and it's proven itself to be super reliable, durable, and accurate for my everyday barbecuing. In addition to its fast and accurate temperature readings, it also has a fully rotatable probe design and a backlit display, so I can see what the temperature is, even if it's pitch blackout, which, as you saw in this video, was very helpful because the foil boat brisket didn't finish until very late at night. It also has a magnet on the back so I can stick it to the smoker or the fridge when I'm not using it, and it has a really cool hold feature that allows me to reach way back in the smoker, take a temperature read of the meat in the back, and hit the hold button, and then I can pull it out and clearly see what the temperature is. It has an IP67 waterproof rating, which means I can easily wash it off by submerging it in soapy water, which is really important because my thermometers are always getting covered in grease and sauce at the end of the day. I highly recommend the Chef's Temp Final Touch X10, and I've been using it long enough to confidently recommend it to you as a leading instant read thermometer at a very low price point for the value it provides. So if you need an excellent instant read thermometer, click the link in the description section below and use code STBBQ15 to get 15% off your purchase. Again, that's code STBBQ15 for 15% off the Chef's Temp Final Touch X10. All right, let's get back to the video. All right, guys, we have the control brisket here. So I'm gonna slice into this and use it as kind of a baseline to compare the foil boat brisket to. I'm just gonna start by slicing right down the middle here. Slicing like a dream. I'll give you guys a little bit of eye candy. It's looking pretty good so far. Let's start by slicing the point here. So I'll do some burnt ends. All right, this is all sliced up, but before I dig into this, I'm going to pour myself a dram of Bowmore 12 year. I like to have a little scotch with my brisket, nothing wrong with that. Cheers. Ooh, that's tasty. Mm. Okay, let's take a look at this brisket, starting with the point. Give you guys a close up. Pulls apart effortlessly, let's see how it tastes. Really good, perfectly cooked. Now let's take a piece of the flat. Pulls apart perfectly. The flat is really good as well. So no complaints with this brisket. This is pretty much perfectly cooked. It's perfectly seasoned, really liking it. The only thing I'd say is that the bark is a little bit soggy and that happens because I wrapped it. So I'm interested to see what the foil boat brisket tastes like. Okay, so we got this foil boat brisket. It was held in the CVAP for 10 hours overnight and it's looking really good. It looks like the bark has held up its crispiness. It hasn't gotten soggy at all, which is really nice. And it smells really smoky. It smells actually really, really smoky. A lot smokier than the last brisket, the control brisket. So let's take this out of the foil boat. Ooh, that liquid is hot. Ooh. And without further ado, I'm just gonna slice into this guy. Now this is a big brisket and it took a lot longer than normal to finish as a result. So I'm interested to see what the results will be. Looking really nice. Let's take a slice of the point here. Get those burnt ends out of the way. Now it is a little bit harder because the bark is so crispy to get through the upper layer, but then it kind of gets a lot easier once you start slicing through that layer of bark. Slicing pretty easily. Let's take a look at one of these slices. 
looks pretty nice. Let's do the pull test. Pulls apart really easily. Time for a taste. It's nice, really smoky. One thing I noticed is that if you take a look at the point, the fat is really well rendered. It's almost rendered all the way down to the meat and that provides a lot of flavor. So all that extra time unwrapped in the smoker all the way to finishing the brisket really renders that fat cap and gives you this nice ring of fat on the outside of the slice that is just caramelly, sweet, salty, and just super delicious. It's also really smoky. And the meat itself is very tender. It's as tender as the control brisket, which I wasn't expecting because in previous experiments when I've held a foil boat brisket overnight in some sort of dry environment like an oven or a master built electric smoker, the brisket dries out a little bit. Mmm. So I think the CVAP did its job here. Let's take another slice of the point. Really juicy. Pulls apart really easily. The fat cap, guys. That's just amazing. I'll give you a look at the point here. You can see how that fat cap is just almost non-existent. It's rendered all the way down to the meat and it just looks super delicious. I'm gonna take a slice of the flat now. This piece has been oxidizing, so I'll just move that over there. And we'll take a look. I'll give you guys a look at a piece of the flat that hasn't been soaked in tallow. Super juicy, amazingly juicy, hasn't dried out in the least with that overnight hold. Let's see if it pulls apart. Pulls apart effortlessly, perfectly cooked brisket. I'm really impressed by this. Texture's amazing, super juicy. Let's try out the bark here. Mm. That fully rendered fat cap, guys, that is just next level. If you take a look at the flat here, you can see that it's the same as the point. Now, if you've cooked a lot of briskets like I have, then you'll notice that whenever you wrap briskets, you'll usually get a white band of fat and it'll be caramelized on the top and then there'll be a white band underneath it. But you can see that the fat has fully rendered here. It's fully caramelized, rendered down all the way to the meat. And as a result, it's just packed full of flavor. So let's talk about conclusions for this video, but I'm gonna grab my scotch here just so I can ponder. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep, okay. So in general, and my previous experiments have corroborated this and shown this as well, the foil boat brisket tends to have a smokier bark, a more crispy bark, and in general, the fat cap is better rendered. And what that means is that you can't really see any white on the fat cap anymore. Normally when you wrap a brisket, you can see at least a tiny layer of thin white opaque fat and then a kind of caramelized layer on top of that. But with the foil boat brisket, it has so much time exposed to that hot convective airflow flowing over top of the brisket in the offset smoker that it gets a ton of fat rendering and that translates into a ton of flavor. I think that's probably the number one advantage to the foil boat method in addition to the crispiness and the smokiness of the bark. Second thing, when you hold it in a dry environment like an oven or a master built electric smoker or maybe even a turkey roaster, something where the relative humidity is relatively low, I think you tend to get a less juicy result overall than if you wrap the brisket in foil or butcher paper and then hold it or rest it. It's just gonna be more juicy when you foil it or you butcher paper it because it's retaining more moisture. But using this CVAP holding oven and setting the relative humidity really high, not at 100%, but low enough that it isn't going to dissolve or make the bark soggy, but high enough that it's going to retain the moisture. I think that really helps the brisket. So what can you do at home? Because I realize that not everyone has a CVAP holding oven like I do. Only a small fraction of people will have this device. I think that what you can do is look for opportunities to add moisture or humidity to your holding device. If that's a master built electric smoker, fill up the water pan, put another water pan in there with some water, put it right over top of the element just to create some steam, just to try to bump up that relative humidity somewhere above 25, 30% if you have the ability to measure it, but somewhere below 100% humidity, which is a fully steamy environment that's gonna soak and make the bark soggy. In an oven, you can do the same thing. You can add a water pan, 
anything to really add humidity. You could even go in maybe every couple hours while you're holding or at the beginning and near the end and maybe just give a light spritz to the brisket. Or if you have one of those ANOVA precision ovens, you can set the relative humidity to like 50% and you can probably achieve the same results. And those are relatively inexpensive. Well, they're a lot less than a CVAP holding oven in any case. You can also look on vbor.com. I know Mad Scientist Barbecue bought one of these cheaper holding ovens that are only a couple hundred bucks and you could potentially add a water pan to one of those if you're holding a lot of briskets. But in general, I think that if you can find a way to hold the brisket and also add some humidity so it's not a super dry holding environment, then I think that the foil boat brisket is superior to other methods. It has the same juiciness, but it also has the better fat rendering, more smoke flavor and crunchier bark. So it's firing on all cylinders. Thank you so much for watching guys. I will see you in the next video and happy smoking.